I'm going to talk about an ANOVA and a table and how to read it. I don't use them that often. In fact, I couldn't find a paper where I actually used an ANOVA. I used it in my PhD thesis, but that was eons ago. So let's take a look at this one. It's looking at household income in thousands. So what does that mean? Well, they did a study and they looked at the income of people with high, a high school education, a college education, a, and, uh, and an education like uh, an MA or uh, above undergraduate, and they compared the income. All right. And if you look here at the table, you look at between groups. That's what we're looking at. That's what you'll see in a table on a research paper. Don't ignore the within groups for now. And so you look at the between groups and you think, well, how many groups? Well, if you go to degrees of freedom and add one, that would mean there are five groups. That's how you tell. That's a, a rule of thumb. So the DF is degrees of freedom, add one, and there are five groups that they're comparing. And the F value, which is the ANOVA's version of a T value, is significant. It comes out at 0 0.000, which is less than, which is P. That's the P value, significant. It could say P. The P value is P less than 0 0.0001 here in this case. All right. So don't let that significance uh, fool you or confuse you. I don't think they're trying to fool you. It's just the P value, and it's very, very low. So what does that mean? Well, it means that there's at least one significant difference between these groups. But that's not very satisfying, is it? We have five groups. We want to know which groups are different. And so what you have to run, and don't let this freak you out, you have to run a post hoc test to check each of the pairings. It'll check the difference between group one and group two, group one and group three, group one and group four, group one and group five, and then group two and group three and two group, group two and group four and then group two and group five and I guess you get the pattern. It does all those comparisons and finds out which ones are significant. So let's take a look at that because you'll see that. You'll see a post hoc test. That means a test after the fact. If this wasn't significant, we wouldn't do a post hoc test. But really with the ANOVA, the, the one-way ANOVA, because we're just comparing one uh, set of groups is significant. So let's take a look. All right, so when you run the postdoc test, it kind of groups the, the, the means, the mean incomes here. So did not complete high school, high school degree in some college. They're sort of grouped in group one, okay? Uh, 51,000 to 56,000. And then the sum college to college degree, they're kind of grouped. Uh, they're sort of the same. Uh, and there's a bit of an overlap here. And then the post undergraduate degree is 99,000. And we can say that that group is distinctly different from these groups. Okay? So you might see this in a research paper and they would say yes there's a difference between these groups and we know that those people with a post undergraduate degree have significantly higher incomes than those who do not have that degree that's what you can read in this table this is a bit messy here in the table you see some overlap you probably can conclude that people with a college degree have a significantly more income than uh, the people that did not complete high school or high school degree. But we can't make a conclusion that the people with some college and a college degree have significantly different incomes, even though I would rather have 70,000 than 56,000. That's just what the table says. So that's how to interpret an ANOVA.